good morning folks uh, thanks for attending um, i know it's the last day uh, so i'll get started <clears throat> so the topic is kind of a mouthful i'll i'll try to explain as i go along uh, um, but before that uh, my name is harsh uh, i'm an infrastructure engineer I've been working with kubernetes uh, since last uh, four years almost uh, and i found this project called buildsafe which i'll talk about uh, I'm also a huge uh, fan of chess and I love watching movies. Um, unfortunately, my uh, friend couldn't come here, uh, Kunal, like uh, he couldn't make it, so, but he's uh, a devrel at Keep Simplify. <coughs> so, <coughs> before we start, like uh, you all have heard of these uh, container tools, right? Like Docker is what most of us are familiar with. It has changed our la landscape of how, like, it has brought containers to us. Uh, we've heard of it, and then there are other ones like Podman, um, and then there are more infra-friendly ones which are more machine-driven, like uh, Containerd, uh, CRIO. Um, so, uh, and then we have these VM-backed tools, um, and this is what we have kind of uh, needed to build, and I'll get to why. Uh, but this Docker Desktop and Obstack, these are the proprietary ones. But we get this uh, cross-environment manageable um, uh, vi virtual machines that we can use our container runtimes for, right? Uh, there are other ones like Finch, Colima as well, uh, which we'll talk about, but just wanted to give a quick overview before we start. So there's a story behind why I needed to build one of those uh, Docker desktop-like things, uh, and that's what I wanted to share today and uh, how I ended up uh, starting building it. So, um, I'm sure like you folks are aware of this. Uh, just wanted to recap that um, we have these OCI registries like Docker Hub and uh, other registries. Um, and there's this thing called snapshotters, uh, something which Containerd has popularized. Um, and it lets us pull these OCI layers and um, unpack them into this root file system that can be handed off to Docker runtime or whichever runtime we use, container runtime we use, right? So these snapshotters are the key ingredient here because um, they enable how we can unpack something which is off the internet, right? Like it could be anything. Um, and it could allow something as fancy as lazy pulls. Like you don't immediately pull entire data. You just pull what's needed. Uh, and you can customize it. Uh, so you could essentially have something that is not even a tar OCI format. Uh, and these snapshotters allow us to do that. Um, and there have been a lot of image formats uh, other than OCI images in uh, recently. How many of you have heard of Star GZ or used it? Uh, okay, no problem. So it's it's a format uh, that has been evolved from something Google made like four or five years ago, uh, which allows for this lazy pulling uh, for faster cold boots because each container takes a couple of seconds to pull the image and start up. Uh, what these folks realized is you don't need the entire root file system to start the container. So you just need the essential files to boot up the container. So, and then there has been more optimizations. Like people felt that OCI image as a whole is a bit outdated because it's built up on tar, which has been designed in 1960s. So people came up with newer image formats uh, on things like uh, enhanced read-only file system um, uh, and made this thing called NIDAS images, which is not compatible with OCI, but it allows for uh, efficient deduplication on disk and uh, better network distribution. Uh, the similar one like overlay BD, um, but there's a challenge with all these new formats. Uh, even though like they solve this huge problem that of cold starts because uh, cold starts could essentially mean that we, we could scale things to zero and not have to worry about when we have requests. Um, and we also have this efficient storage, so we're not overpaying for the uh, storage of images on our nodes. And then there's the network uh, bandwidth we spend on downloading and pushing images, all that, uh, just things being faster helps us. Uh, so, and then there's the distribution. So by distribution, what I mean is, imagine that uh, you have a Kubernetes cluster and one of the node pulls an image. Now the next time some other node in the same cluster pulls an image, it's going to pull again from Docker Hub or whichever OCI registry we use, right? Now what happens is uh, in an ideal world, you could just pull it from the same network on, in, in the other node, right? But that's not what happens today with OCI images, just because it's not designed to do that exactly. Uh, but the challenges with all these newer formats is that 
um, they're not widely adopted. So even though if you decide you want to adopt this new format, your other uh, projects you rely on might not choose to. They might not see the value you are seeing. Um, and so you might need to rebuild from source, which could be a necessary evil considering all the supply chain attacks. Like just this morning, we heard about this supply chain attack by, on our pages. So that, that's a hardware one, but equally we know that uh, software supply chain risk is increasing. Uh, cloud providers aren't uh, incentivized to push for this either, like uh, there needs to be huge demand for it for them to uh, start supporting it. Um, and then there's the developer tooling app. So we know with Docker, like everything just kind of works, we're happy with it. So um, why do we need more, right? So uh, we, we need that gap if you're bringing a new format to uh, let developers adopt this. But before we move to like another image format, the question we need to ask is, are we making the most out of the current OCI image spec? Um, and for that, like the first thing is uh, rebuilding. Like uh, right now, uh, the way we manage OS packages is like we have a single instruction in our Docker file saying uh, the run statement, it could be apt install or apk add or whatever. And this is not something we can statically analyze and uh, create a a PR for right, like uh, this. This is just a line. We don't know which versions are there uh, just by looking at that file. So we can't do much automation there. Um, and we know that whenever there's a patch, we need to immediately rebuild things. In our current Docker file ecosystem, we don't have that flexibility that we want. Um, and then there's the uh, thing I was talking about that we need to start building things from source. Uh, and SolarWinds attack is one of the famous ones where uh, US government got compromised because SolarWinds um, shipped compromised software because their build system got compromised. Now, how they solved it is they ran two build systems, generated, they built the same artifact, compared the hashes. If the hash is same, they release it. If, if it's not, they don't release it because they assume one of the build system is compromised. Now for this, the key ingredient here is reproducibility because if the build process is not deterministic, if it has things like timestamp or some machine ID, then you can imagine like the artifact hashes will be completely different. So this is one of the key things like why reproducibility is starting to matter more and more other than um, like just developer experience. Um, then the other thing is uh, OCI layers itself. So there's a hard limit of 128 layers uh, because of overlay file system that we all use in our container and times today. And the way we structure this 128 layers is not that efficient because the way we do it right now is with Docker files, the instructions we keep, each, some of these instructions create these layers uh, and we stack up on top of those. Uh, and that's how we, you have probably seen how it invalidates when we change a bot, like the most bottom instruction, right? So, um, and our run statements where we install the OS packages is just one statement and it's all bundled up into this one layer. Um, that's not the most uh, optimal way to do it. The optimal way would be what we have on the right side where each OS package is its own layer. And when there's a CVE on one of those packages, you just patch that one particular package and just update that image. So that's more op atomic and uh, uh, better than the thing we do on the left side. So in an ideal ecosystem, we would have uh, on-demand rebuilding so that uh, we can declaratively manage and uh, update our dependencies, OS dependencies. We can build from source, have reproducible builds, prove that uh, dependencies came from, like we can build our own pipeline uh, from source code and uh, build that trust in the software we consume. Um, and then we use these flexible OS packages as a building block, not just these golden images, because the problem with golden images is they work until they do. And when they don't, we just fall back to something big, uh, bloated images, right? So uh, we need to have the flexibility to directly hook into the OS package repositories. Um, and then we just need seamless tooling. Like that's a, a big thing. And at some point when we have all this, maybe we can consider like switching to some other format and that could just be a little detail. Uh, but having all these above things will help us eventually move to a new format is something I've realized. And there are these other container build, uh, build tools, right? So uh, Docker uses build kit under the hood. And there's also builder. Uh, but 
they offer a lot of flexibility but all these uh, declarative management and everything needs to be built on top again and then there are these source to image tools as well like build packs co which are amazing tools for what they do uh, but the problem is they are only language dependent they do not have much idea about how to source os dependencies um, and then there is next which is what i'll be talking about today um, which because that's the pro uh, project we choose for uh, uh, our tool um, so Nix allows for declarative management of OS dependencies and that comes with huge benefits of auto patching things. It also is reproducible. So it's this, like it came out 10 years before uh, Docker did, it came up with its own content, content addressable storage, uh, which is pretty cool. And uh, they've been thinking about reproducibility before any one of us have even, uh, like they basically came up with it uh, in software supply chain. Uh, they also have a way to uh, think of these OS packages as Legos, so you can uh, fit them however you need for your um, uh, OCI image rather than just thinking of it in the way we do currently with Docker files stacking up. You can just pick up two OS packages, uh, lay them on the same layer or just stack them up one by one. So it's completely up to us how we want to arrange our uh, output. So and then there's the uh, ideal way of where we have just one single package manager uh, and we take the DevOps approach of using the single package manager across all our environments, all our teams, uh, so that we, like any developer that onboards can reuse the same package management and not rely on their implicit dependencies on the system. And the CI team, whoever writes CI, doesn't have to figure out what dependencies the developer used. It's all just free flowing and then Security teams also have a easier day because they don't have to deal with 10 package managed ecosystems. They just have to focus on one um, and that makes their life easier as well. So this is, these are all the reasons that led me to uh, create this project called Build Safe, um, which focuses on these problems like uh, supply chain problems in particular and build problems so that we produce high quality uh, uh, software. Uh, with We build high quality software with trust in it. Um, I, I'll demo this in a bit, but um, the pro there, there's a problem. Um, when we're trying to build, like I develop on a Mac, so the problem I had is um, I have Docker desktop. I can run containers there, but I don't want to use Docker build uh, because I know there are these problems. I want to use Nix. And Nix uh, requires its own VM um, because uh, it's, it's, it's also just like Docker requires its own VM, Nix requires its own VM to build Linux containers. So uh, this required me to like have two containers, which I did not like. Uh, ideally, I just want one VM, which has both Nix and uh, Docker, right? Uh, or whichever other um, container at a time I want. So the question I had to ask is, can I just use one VM somehow? Um, and that's, the talk, that's what the talk is about. Um, so the problem with the current tools was Docker Desktop doesn't allow me to customize uh, the VM templates. Like I could do it once, but then I can't distribute it. Uh, same with Colima. Um, and then uh, there are other tools like Finch. They allow to add binaries, uh, but those are just for snapshot risk. So I would kind of be abusing if I did more than that. So uh, how did I end up solving this? is um, I found out about Lima, which is a lovely open source project. Um, both Colima and Finch rely on Lima, and Lima is actually a virtual, man virtual machine management tool. So you could just uh, manage VMs on any uh, OS, like Windows, Linux, or Mac, and it provides this unified layer for us as developers to interact with and manage virtual machines. So. It, it also takes care of details like uh, running a QMU process or something native like Apple virtual, virtualization. So all those things are customizable and uh, Lima provides that right layer of abstraction for us to build things on top of. So uh, what I ended up doing was I created a new Lima VM template where I have Nix pre-installed as a base and then installed Docker on top of that. Uh, I also con then configured uh, in a way that Nix, uh, this Nix VM serves as a builder and not just stays there. Um, and then I can start building OCI images on top of it. Um, and I'll show a demo now. Is my screen visible? 
Is it below? OK. So I have this repo. Uh, I've initialized it already. Uh, I'll show you the file. If, if we do a BSF in it, we get this file where we get like basic dependencies like uh, Go, uh, Go compiler. This is a Go project. So we have this Go compiler version and uh, the debugger and uh, Go tools, uh, very standard for Go development. And in runtime, we have CA search because when we ship it to production, we want CA search to be bundled with our, uh, I think, when we have search and everything, right? So, um, and the way we search dependencies is very simple. Like we can just search BSF search curl and um, let's hope the internet <laughs> works. Yeah, okay. Uh, so when I do BSF search curl, I can see all the packages that the curl maintainers have created and ones that have the name curl in it. So let's go with curl and I'm going to intentionally choose a lower version, but you see like we, we are able to, uh, I don't think it's visible. Okay, I think there's a issue with screen sharing. But essentially, this shows the homepage URL if it's free to use and the license uh, of it. So I'm going to choose an intentionally lower version um, so that I can show you that this package has CVs. Now this is important uh, because what this allows is for security teams to lay these guardrails where developers can roam free. But as developers, we get to know that we are choosing a package which has vulnerabilities in it. This is a nice, to, a nice workflow where we don't try to uh, do it after the fact that developer develops something, we try to do it before. Um, so we see there are vulnerabilities in it. And I know that I want this package for development. And the last thing it asks me is an update strategy because as a developer, I know the package I'm importing, I need to think about the update strategy. Like if the package I'm choosing follows somewhere, uh, then I would just go with patch versions. But if I know they don't make uh, breaking changes uh, in the minor version, uh, in the minor versions, I can just go with minor versions, right? So um, with curl, it's something stable. So I, I just go with minor versions. So um, having that flexibility and ha asking developer which update strategy they want when they pick the uh, OS package is kind of critical. So I've selected this. Oops. Yeah. So, and the nice thing is now that I've selected this and I do a BSF develop, uh, I will get all the dependencies that were there. So right now my system has this curl version on 8.4.0, but in, in the development shell of BSF, I will get a version which I defined in my BSF HCL file, which is 8.1.1. And the nice thing is, um, because we know that this has vulnerabilities, we want this somehow patched automatically, right? So we could have a GitHub bot do it, or we could just do it locally uh, with BSF update. And this would just go and find out the latest minor version available for this package I have, and then update it. So now if I look at BSF HCL file again, we see that curl is on 8.8.0. So uh, this was just about what the project uh, does in development aspect. Uh, now, I want to build a OCI image on from this, right? So how do I do that? So uh, I could uh, have this command where I can uh, have this OCI block, uh, OCI packages, and I have specified the name of the package I want. Um, I can provide the command and entry point as well. Uh, but since this is a very basic image, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to provide the block name in the end. Uh, let me see if I can push it up. I hope it's visible, but uh, the command is basically BSF OCI packages because that's the block name and the platform Linux AMD 64. And uh, I'm going to just push it to the registry. Um, and I'm going to build the development dependencies. That's the reason I provided minus minus dev. And I've just provided tag uh, as dev. So that's going to go and start building it. It should be cached. Uh, yeah, it's cached because uh, GitHub is rate limiting me in, uh, on conference Wi-Fi. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, and then I can also build um, the runtime uh, runtime one because I just want an image which has runtime dependencies, the CA search image. I don't want anything else in it. So now I have these two images, right? So now I can just plug this in in my Docker file uh, and I'll be good to go. So 
Um, and, and this Docker file can be completely hermetic as well. So I could just go mod vendor and uh, vendor all my dependencies, the Go dependencies. So I'm completely rebuilding, like all the dependencies I import are, I'm accepting that all dependencies I import are my liability. Uh, and it's my responsibility to own them and keep them updated and everything. So uh, this sort of flow allows us to directly use OS packages as our base image layer. We don't have, we don't need to go and search for that golden base image somewhere. We could just use our development dependencies and start building our own ones in a very simple way and create base images. And that, that's on, um, like this is on Mac on with a Linux VM. So that, that's what uh, the talk was about. Um, so what's next is uh, I ideally like to pack this Lima VM similar to how Finch does it. Finch is an open source uh, project by AWS folks. Uh, so they, they, did it, they, did, they built something similar to Docker Desktop. It, it just doesn't have a desktop application. But other than that, it's very similar. Um, so ideally, packaging it in a similar way would be nice so that people can just start up this uh, whole VM and manage it just like they are used to with Docker Desktop. Um, and ability to customize snapshotters uh, is also useful because then people could plug in any snapshot they want and use any potential uh, for their enhancement in, in the image formats. So that would be pretty cool as well. Um, and then maybe it just doesn't have to be Docker in it. We can add Nerdcuttle and Podman as well, depending on what people favor. So that, that's kind of the idea. Uh, if you liked what you saw, I, I would really appreciate if you folks would join our Discord community. Um, if you're interested in the project, if you think supply chain uh, and this development workflow is nice, uh, I appreciate if you join. Um, and I'm open for questions. I think I ended. I think we have time for questions, yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, the performance should be better. Uh, like the first build is kind of slow because uh, we build things from source. Uh, that, that is optional actually, but uh, if you're building everything from source, it's going to be a little slow. Uh, but most of the things are cached very efficiently because it's reproducible. We have this content reproducible storage and it's more granular uh, than we have with uh, our uh, OCI ecosystem. Because in OCI ecosystem, we have these star layers, even though most of the things are shared, like we have many common packages there. Uh, since it's star layers, even a file change could result into a completely different hash rate. So even, it's con even if it's content addressable, we are addressing the wrong uh, thing to build on top of. So um, with this, we are picking a granular thing like OS package. So it's better, uh, it's faster in that way uh, in terms of caching. Um, but the first builds are usually pretty slow. But the next build, as you saw, like I could just build it even though I'm pretty much offline uh, on the conference Wi-Fi. Any other questions? Oh, OK. Yeah, sure. Uh, do you mean this one or? This one. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. So I get. It. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. There's a blog I uh, wrote as well in the in the website. Uh, so I've de I've detailed about why we need this kind of building, uh, like, uh, b like kind of like Legos. Like you want this OS package as Legos, not as these layers. So. Uh, Anything else? I think we have, uh, how much time did I take? 25 minutes, yeah. So <laughs> I ended up 15 minutes early. I was afraid I'm going to go over time. <laughs> uh, 
okay if no questions I i'll just be hanging around if you uh, want to ask something um and i'm going to give you 15 minutes back <laughs> to have lunch early <laughs>